Hi uh, YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review of Dexter Season 6, Episode 11, Talk to the Hand. Um, I gotta say I'm having a little trouble remembering what happened in the episode because uh, I was also watching the Giants come back and beat the Cowboys on Sunday night, and um, the Boardwalk Empire finale was just crazy, and they took a page from... Uh, from like the Game of Thrones book where you kill someone that's supposed to be unkillable um, I won't spoil it for anyone but uh, those two things really kind of rule the night where I kind of almost forgot like oh yeah I gotta do a Dexter review um, but anyway um, this episode of Dexter while good and is leading into the finale nicely um, showed I think the glaring imperfections that Dexter as a series has had and I've said this before that Dexter, for being as brilliant as he is, and as you know, one step ahead of everyone as he is, and as careful as he is, gets way too lucky and takes way too many risks for things. Um, and at first, you can say that well, he gets lucky and he takes a risk because he knows he's going to get you know the killer at the end. But um, it's really just lazy kind of writing. Um, and that was one of my biggest criticisms of the second season of the show, which. I gotta admit, I think I've been too hard on season two because the problems that I had with season two, with like Dokes and Lila all, you know, canceling each other out and Dexter ended up being okay, all of that stuff, I don't think it was anywhere near as bad as some of the, the shit that's been going on like this season. Um, just, I mean, and, and if I went through all of the stuff, way back in the first episode where I said where the, the jock ended up missing at the reunion and, you know, nobody. In, you know, goes after it. I had said early on, like, you know, people gotta stop complaining about those things. Because at the time, it was one thing in one episode. Um, but, you know, right off the bat with this one, just like last week, we start this week with um, the police at the... the, uh... the boat. Uh, the fuck pad from last week. Um, Ricochet Rabbit, that's what it is. Where the girl was dead, um, and Dexter had stabbed the one, uh, the one guy, and he found out about Wormwood and everything like that. Uh, we start there only because Dexter called the police, right? But does Miami Metro look into who called the police? No, it's an anonymous tip. Okay. Do they listen to the voice? Which sounds a lot like, oh, I don't know, someone that works for them? I mean, if Dexter had done a little bit of like an accent or something like that, just something small like that, then it wouldn't even be something to complain about. No, I know that sounds like a nitpick, but when you put that together with a lot of other shit... It looks lazy. It really does. But, um... Uh, anyway. Uh, moving on. So, basically... Right, we start off where Dexter is able to, you know, pretty much analyze his own kill scene. Um, you know, which is fine. And, uh... The police still think that they're after Geller and Travis with changes by, you know, the end of this episode. Uh, they also find out that Batista's not there, and where is he, and he's been missing, which brings us to the, one of the cliffhangers from last week I was looking forward to seeing how they would deal with. And it was okay, you know, Quinn redeemed himself a little bit by heading back for him, it was his fault in the first place, but, um, but, uh, but still, he gets there in the nick of time. Why Travis didn't just shoot Batista, yeah, I guess you want to argue that he didn't shoot him because if he shot him... Quinn wouldn't have stayed behind and he would have ran after him and caught him right away. I guess. Again, it sounds like a nitpick, but, you know, they're gonna pile up throughout this episode. Um, but it was nice that Quinn went and he got after him. Um, and Batista did say thank you, but also basically let him have it. Deborah let him have it, which, uh, he needs. And I think he's gonna wake up now and he'll be alright. Uh, which is good, because we want Quinn to not be, like, a, a douchebag. Um, there's enough assholes in this series. <coughs> LaGuerta, we'll, which we will get to later also. Um, let's see, so that kind of covers that part of it. Um, okay. Dexter basically knows that Wormwood is going to happen somewhere sometime, and then he ends up saving everyone by getting lucky. Uh, which this I didn't mind, because um, at first I thought she was going to unleash the gas on Miami Metro with none of the main characters there. Which um, which would have worked, I wouldn't have been that upset, but there was more suspense in it, so it was actually kind of cool. Um, and I liked how Dexter did save Deb. Um, 
and uh, he got affected by you know what was going on, which makes him a little more vulnerable um, physically. Which is the right. I like that they did that. That that's kind of good because that's able to put put it on even like stakes with Colin Hanks. Normally Dexter would just beat the shit out of him and get him one two three. But when you give Dexter kind of a you know a weakness or something like that, you know, give him a little uh, kryptonite, so to speak, I guess if you want to call it. Um, you know, puts it on a little more even playing field. Um, anyway, uh, not to get, I don't want to get long-winded here. Um, so yeah, so he, uh, he saves her. Deb's real thankful. Uh, kind of leads into the stuff with Deb this episode where her therapist, who is get, is a little weird. You know, I, I've been liking those scenes for basically just... Deb and I like Deb and I like hearing what she has to say about herself and it's it was nice for a while, but that therapist is odd, very odd, very kind of creepy too. I don't know, I don't really like her. But um, so then we get the incest but not incest thing because they're not really brother and sister. They were married in real life, uh, Michael C. Hall and Jennifer Carpenter. It was still weird. Um, it was a dream sequence. I've heard people saying that if they get together, they'll jump the shark. That's not going to happen. That would be... I don't know if that would be jumping the shark completely, but it's not going to happen because I don't think Dexter is going to go for it. Um, and plus, it's not really fair if she really does. She's got to, you know, find out who he is first before she's going to... before I think they should ever let her try to get close to him like that. Um, I think it's just going to be something awkward. Um, and I think something's going to happen with it next week. Um, where either she'll snap out of it, or or something. I don't know, but I think I think I think she's gonna snap out of it next week. I don't think this is gonna be a long-winded thing like through the next couple of seasons. Um, I hope so, anyway, because uh, it could get boring after a while. But anyway, um, so yeah, what else? Moving on. All right, I'm gonna stick with Deb for a little bit here. Um, I, I can't stand LaGuerta. I hope, I, I really hope, um, you know, it was just bullshit. I mean, I, I actually, I gotta give them a little credit on at least making her, like, full-fledged, you know, bitch now, where there's, like, no redeeming qualities. Um, you know, no more, no heart, no nothing, just complete bitch, uh, villain, a problem that I think is gonna be a setup for, I don't think that's gonna get resolved next week at all, I think that's gonna be a setup for the next couple of seasons, which is fine. Um, uh, because I don't mind waiting for that, that, that shit to hit the fan. Um, so, yeah, oh, my phone is ringing. Oh, that's actually Rob calling me. Hold on a second. Hey, I'm making a Dexter video. Yeah, you're on, uh, you're on the webcam right now. We well, didn't, I, they didn't hear you say that. Don't worry, he didn't say anything bad. Um... Yeah, can I call you? Yeah, can I call you back? Yeah. Okay, bye. That was the other half of uh, Fuzzy Motion calling me. Sorry. Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> lost my train of thought. Um, Alright, yeah, so... Also moving on to another storyline that's clearly going to be coming in in Season 7. Uh, that weird intern that sent the package, the hand to Dexter... Um, the Ice Trek Killer's Hand. I like where they're going with that. I think that's going to be... That's going to set up nicely next year. Um, I don't know really where they're going with it, what his deal is completely, which, again, I like. And I like... I'm going to look forward to seeing that go on next season. So I will admit that they're doing a really good job at setting up some things for next year already. Um, things that I'm intrigued about, too. So that's good. All right, moving on. Oh, my God. What's going on? Um, moving on to more of the... End stuff of the episode. Uh, Dexter forces Colin Hanks's hand. Um, proves that what's his name that uh, almost is dead with the uh, the symbolism with the uh, on the uh, the statue and everything like that, and uh, which was good. But then he he calls him, and it's on, one. It's an obvious trap. Uh, it makes Travis look like an idiot for even going. Um, it makes Dexter... I mean, De it's like, you know, how do you take that risk? Like, you think you're going to catch him. Like, that's the only way out. Like, oh, he took the risk because he knows he's going to, you know, he's going to kill him. Yeah, and then he didn't. So now he's fucked. Maybe. 
He didn't go to the hospital, like you know, like an idiot again. So that was stupid. A lot of mixed feelings. You know, it was a fun episode, but it was a lot of some things in it that really like bothered me. The more I thought about it. Um. Anyway, that that those were a couple of them. I've heard that complaint before too. Um. Also, a problem is is Hanks painted the really funny looking picture of Dexter as like the devil or whatever. Um. Which I was reading a review of the episode on on BillyDow.com. You should check it out. It's a pretty good review site. It does a lot of good genre shows and stuff. And she had pointed out that one, Lila do a, drew a painting of Dexter in season two, which I forgot about, um, which again could be lazy, because I don't think it was supposed to be a callback or anything. Just kind of repeating themselves. But uh, also she pointed out that Dexter actually does have an out. If they find the painting, he can say, like, oh, you know, they heard that I was the one that stopped the Wormwood situation, and that's why Travis is pissed at me, not, you know because of all this other stuff that we know about. Which is a possible out form on that, which I didn't think about, but like I said, this review kind of pointed out to me. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, Dexter got caught, escaped the Ring of Fire. Of course he did. Um, how the hell he's going to swim back to shore? Again, there's another problem, potential problem. Um, he's going to float on a log or something all the way back to Miami? I don't know. He lost his boat. Um, don't know if he's still sick or not whatever uh, but still it was a solid episode Colin Hanks was great again um, I'm looking for uh, it, I'm almost starting to be sad to see him go next week and you know he's going um, also again Showtime fucked up by showing us way too much in the preview thanks Showtime um, but I'm looking forward to next week looking forward to seeing how they wrap this up uh, I'm pretty sure this season is only going to rest at the fifth spot through the first six for me um, it's not going to get ahead of season three or two uh, it's going to be ahead of season five, but um, that middle stretch really killed it. Really did for me. Uh, but I'll talk more about that next week. All right, guys. Uh, let me know what you thought, as always. Um, and I will see you guys with Dexter, the uh, Dexter finale next week. Until then, some more movie stuff and whatever. All right. Later.